Hello and good afternoon. CTS 266, Section 840 students for the Spring 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the Cisco Networking Academy CCMP Switch course, and this afternoon's video tutorial is going to be on inner VLAN routing. And unlike the previous discovery activity where we took a look at inner VLAN routing from the perspective of an external router, you are using an external router, we're going to be doing uh, inner VLAN routing, but now we're going to be using a multi-layer switch. As you can see here, we've got DSW1 uh, in the center of our screen. So let's go ahead and dive in. And remember, this is going to build on those use cases we talked about, where now uh, we need to make sure that we are configuring uh, the SVIs, or the switch virtual interfaces. So let's pull up DSW1 here, and let's go from user exec into privilege exec with the enable command and then the configure terminal command to get us into global config. And let's say do show VLAN brief. The activity mentions that it's, uh, it's actually created uh, the VLANs already for us, uh, but then it asks us to create them again anyway. Now remember, on a net new switch, you're only going to have five VLANs that are going to be created uh, by default, and those are going to be VLANs 1, which is your Cisco default VLAN, uh, and then the token and FIDI VLANs that are there for backwards compatibility, they're legacy and really not used anymore, and that's 1002 uh, through 1005. So those are the five VLANs that are going to exist by uh, exist by default. However, let's go ahead, we'll go through the motions here, and let's change the name. Uh, we'll just say that this is going to be the HR department, and then we'll say VLAN 20, and we'll spice it up here, and this is going to be the engineering department. So remember, if I say do show VLAN brief, are we going to see these changes? And we do for VLAN 10, but we don't for VLAN 20. Now, when I type end and exit out and say show VLAN brief, we should see, there we go, and we should see those changes take effect for both VLANs. So now that we've gone ahead and created the VLANs, let's say show run and let's pipe it to an include. And let's look and see if routing is on. Well, it looks like it says no IP routing. So let's go back here. Let's check and see what PC1 has for an IP address. We'll go from user exec to privilege exec and say show IP interface brief. So the IP address is 1001, uh, sorry, 100. And my guess is PC2 is going to have the same IP as the previous activity. Show IP interface brief of 100. Now, what VLANs do those uh, switches belong to? So my guess is VLAN 10 and 20. Let's confirm. If I say show VLAN brief over here, you can see we've got VLAN 10 and 20. And what about show interfaces trunk? Because we should have a trunk link, and it is a 802. It is an 802.1Q trunk uh, that runs between the layer two capable switch and the multi-layer or layer three capable switch. So this link right here is a trunk link. So when VLAN 20 traffic is coming that direction and VLAN 10 traffic, whoops, and VLAN 10 traffic is coming that direction, that that traffic will transit uh, this trunk uh, to try to get to their default gateways. And so what we're creating here, and you'll hear this term often, is your layer two, layer three boundary. So where is the layer two boundary? Well, all of these constructs down here, the trunk, the VLANs, that switch, these guys are all layer two. Right? Remember, a trunk is a layer 2 construct. It is not layer 3. So this is my boundary. Well, what's on the other side? Well, layer 3 is on the other side, and what we're going to see is that the SVIs, or the switched virtual interfaces, and all a switched virtual interface is, is a VLAN definition that we create, and we assign an IP to it, and it basically pretends that it is a physical layer three routed port. The only difference is, is that it is not a physical port. It is a 
virtual, right? It is a virtual port on a multi-layer switch that we are going to configure to pretend that it is a layer three physical port. And so when traffic shows up here on that multi-layer switch, irrespective of whether it's from VLAN 10 or VLAN 20, when it hits the switch, we define the switch virtual interfaces to be the default gateways for their respective VLANs. And if we enable IP routing, and that's why I ran that show run include routing. If we enable IP routing, then this multi-layer switch is going to route the traffic between the VLANs that exist on the switch. And that's really all an SVI is. And again, this use case here would be if we have more VLANs than we do available interfaces on that router or we simply do not want to do router on a stick. So can you think of a reason why you, an, uh, another use case as to why you would not want to do router on a stick? So let's say that this is a one gig port and this is a one gig port and maybe you've got many more PCs back here all hanging off of one gig ports. If this switch doesn't have any 10 gig or if the router didn't have 10 gig interfaces, then we would be oversubscribing this trunk link substantially. And that brings us to that conversation we had in class is, is the majority of your traffic flow east west? In other words, is the traffic flow going this way? Is it between PC1 and PC2 or all of these PCs down here? Is that the majority of the traffic flow or is the majority of the traffic flow north and south. In other words, is the majority of your traffic flow exiting or egressing your environment going to the internet? And so that's another thing to take into consideration is the traffic flow. But in our diagram here, our desire is to use this multi-layer switch uh, instead of a router on a stick. So let's go ahead. I'm going to clear the screen here. And you'll notice that we don't have inner VLAN routing, uh, or I should say we don't have IP routing enabled on DSW1. And by default, even on multi-layer switches, the 3650, the 3560, the 3850, IP routing is not enabled by default. So if I were to say ping from PC1, let's ping 10.0.0. Actually, it's going to be 20.100. So can I ping PC2? And now remember, we are in different VLANs. I'm in VLAN. PC1 is in VLAN 10. PC2 is in VLAN 20. And you can see that it's not possible for me to ping PC2. Now, there's a couple reasons why. So the first is, do we have a default gateway configured? up here on this DSW1. Well, let's take a look. Do we have any SVIs created? We've got the VLANs created, but if I say show IP interface brief, do we see any interfaces here that represent the two VLANs, 10 and 20? And the answer to that is no, we don't. And so this is a problem. So now let's go ahead and create the SVI. So we're gonna go from privilege exec into global config, and I'm going to say interface VLAN 10, and we're going to say IP address 10.0.10.1. We're going to give it a slash 24 subnet, um, subnet mask, and then we're going to say no shut. Now, remember, we talked about the auto state command. The interface comes up, but it comes up because the trunk link running between the multi-layer switch and the layer two only switch, this trunk link here, we have the VLANs on that interface. So when I create this SVI here for VLAN 20 or for VLAN 10, those SVIs will come up because there is an interface 
in that VLAN that is in the up up status and it's this trunk interface right here right so that's what allows those SVIs to transition to the up state so I've just created the SVI let's confirm can I ping that from PC1 so if I were to say uh, ping 10.0.10.1 can I ping that default gateway absolutely I've got full reachability and the first ping we needed to ARP out right to resolve that uh, that address now let's try can I ping PC2 so I still can't ping PC2 so let's see is it the fact that we don't have a VLAN created an SVI right a switched virtual interface sorry interface VLAN 20 and we're gonna say IP address 10.0.20.1 and this is going to be a slash 24 and we're going to say no shut now this is also going to be an interface that comes up because there is an interface on this switch it's that trunk link where both VLAN 10 and 20 exist so do show IP interface brief now we see down here at the bottom now we see the two switch virtual interfaces we've just created they're in an up up state and those are the IPs so let's see can PC1 ping PC2? And it can't, because remember, a switch, whether multi-layer or layer two only, the definition of a VLAN is that it is its own broadcast domain. It's its own subnet. It's its own VLAN. And by definition, the reason that we create the VLANs is to segregate the traffic. And that's the whole purpose behind the VLAN is segregation and the right sizing of a broadcast domain or of a subnet. And so you're not going to have communication between those two VLANs because, again, until I enable IP routing, Nothing is going to happen here because this switch, even though it's a multi-layer switch, we haven't enabled the, the quote-unquote multi-layer switch capabilities, and that is the IP routing command. So can I ping the default gateway for VLAN 20? Let's see if we can do that. Can I ping 10.0.20.1? And I can because that exists up on that multi-layer switch right but on the other side can I come from PC2 can I say ping 10.0.10.100 can we ping PC1 from PC2 and the answer is no because the traffic is going to be forwarded to the default gateway because this PC is not on that set network segment so he will forward it to his default gateway at which point the default gateway is going to say which is that multi-layer switch is going to say I am not configured for inter VLAN routing my multi-layer switch functionality has not been configured yet which would have to be configured with that IP routing command so can he ping his default gateway first packets probably going to ARP out it does then all subsequent packets are going to work can he ping that IP address that is up there on the multi-layer switch he can't but again I'm not going to be able to route between those VLANs until we turn on IP routing so let's make that happen here so we're gonna get out of the interface configuration mode so from global config I'm going to say IP routing now as soon as I do that I am now saying that I am okay being able to route traffic between the different broadcast domains so now let's give it a try let's say can I ping 10.0.20.100 absolutely because that multi-layer switch is now routing those packets between the VLANs and we want 10.100 so now I can go between the two PCs. So uh, even from PC2, let's go ahead. They would like us to do a trace route. So 10.0.10.100. Uh, you can see where is my first hop? My first hop is my default 
gateway. My next hop after I get routed via that multi-layer switch is to the PC because that would be the next hop that I would hit, would be the PC. Again, there's a very nice diagram uh, if you're following along. So now what they want us to do is they're asking us in step seven to configure a routed port. Let's go back to our diagram here. They want us to configure a routed port uh, right here. So we're gonna make this a layer three physical port and it is going to be a routed port so we're going to change it to behave as if it was a port on a router right because again this is a multi-layer switch i'll come down to this layer two only switch and let's see what happens if i try to type the command no switch port here because that is the command when you say no switch port that is the command that is going to try to change a layer two port into a layer three routed port. So let's see what happens, and I'm hoping that this is not pre-canned with multi-layer capabilities. Um, and actually, in fact, so here's what we can do to make sure that we don't uh, mess things up here. If I were to come over to uh, this 2950, so this is a 2950 switch here. If I were to say show version, you can see it's a 2950, very old switch, and it's running 12.1 code, right? So this is uh, the Flintstones era. So if I were to say show IP interface brief, you can see we've just got uh, some fast Ethernet ports. Let's go into global config from privilege exec here, and let's say interface fast Ethernet 01, and I'm going to say no switch port. And you can see it says incomplete command. So again, I can't even make this an access, or I can't even make it a layer three port, right? So this switch, this layer two only switch has no layer three capabilities. So I can't, um, whoops. I can't even make it a, a layer three routed port. And so on a layer two switch, that would be our problem. Okay, so here we are. We're back to DSW1, and what we're being asked to do is we want to go into Interface Ethernet 02. That's the interface that connects to the router on the opposite end. Can we get on this router here? Let's take a look. If we go to Privilege Exec and I say Show IP Interface Brief, you can see the router has two routed ports that are up up. And it's going to be this 10.0.99.2 that sits on the other side of the distribution layer switch. Uh, and the multi-layer switch. So here we go. We're going to configure this connection right here so that we can ping this address. We're going to establish an adjacency. So I'm going to go ahead and say no switch port. But actually, give me two seconds here. Before we do that, if I were to say show interface or do show interface, do show interface Ethernet 02 switch port. What does it say right now? It says right here, switch port enabled. If that says enabled, it is a layer two port, period, right? So now watch what happens. And also, uh, let's take a quick look at do show run, and I want to say VLAN, or include VLAN, uh, because we, there's a couple things we want to see here. So the VLAN internal allocation policy ascending. Remember that on multi-layer switches, as soon as you enable, as soon as I type no switch port, you'll notice the port goes down and then comes back up. And the reason for that is behind the curtain, right? Behind the scenes, the multi-layer switch downs the interface, changes it to a layer three interface, a routed port, and allocates a hidden switched virtual interface based off of a VLAN that it's going to snag out of the extended VLAN range starting at 1,006. So when I say do show VLAN brief, you can see where it ends at 1,005 for our uh, Fidian token ring buddies here. So once we get to 1,006, 
that is where it's going to grab its first VLAN when we're creating switched, I'm sorry, when we're creating uh, routed ports on the switch. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at each of these things in turn. So I'm going to say no switch port. As soon as I say no switch port, let's watch what happens here. We should see some messages and there we go. The interface went down, came back up and it's been changed. Now it's a layer three routed port. So if I were to say do show interface Ethernet 02 switch port Where's all that? You remember we used to get all that other output, right? Now we don't get any of that. What we get is switch port disabled. That right there indicates that this is a layer three routed port. Because the switch port has been disabled, the only way to get this output is with the command no switch port. So that's the first check that you can do. If you see this, this means it is a layer three routed port. Now let's take a look on the other side. If I say do show VLAN brief, remember I said what happens behind the scenes is internally, in order to give us this capability, what does this switch have to do? Well, it's going to create a switched virtual interface, an SVI, just like we did when we said interface VLAN 10, interface VLAN 20 and we assigned an IP address to it. Well, that's what's happening here, except it's hidden from our view. We don't see it happening. In fact, you'll notice I commented earlier saying, oh yeah, it's going to grab 1006 because the internal VLAN allocation policy is ascending. So it's going to ascend from 1006 up to 4094. Okay. But where is that? Why doesn't that show here? So again, it all happens behind the scenes. In fact, if I say do show IP interface brief, you're probably looking at me right now saying, well, wait a second, you're telling me that it's creating the switch virtual interface, but where is it? I see VLAN 10 and 20, but where's the other one, Travis? So remember, this is all being done behind the curtain, right? Kind of abstracting the details of what's going on from our view. So if I were to say, do show VLAN internal, and let me actually get, I can't I never remember this command. Let me pop out of here real quick. Show VLAN, um, oh, I can't remember the command. Show, is it internal? No. So show, let me see here real quick. Show run include VLAN. So is it show VLAN in, I thought it was show, yeah, okay. Show VLAN internal allocation, show VLAN internal. Yeah, what is the usage? That's it, show VLAN internal usage. So take a look here. Why does it show that VLAN 1006 is associated to Ethernet 02? And this is exactly the bridging that's taking place. The switch is basically tricking Ethernet 02 to no longer behave and think like he's a layer 2 interface. He's tricking Ethernet 02 by bridging the switched virtual interface VLAN 1006 to be affiliated with Ethernet 02. And that is exactly how we get this layer 3 routed port capability on what was a layer two switch ports. So let's go back into global config. We're going to go to Ethernet 02 and let's finish things up here. I'm going to say IP address 10.0.99.1 because that is going to be the IP for this port and uh, it should be up. Let's see, do ping 10.0.99.2. The first one's probably going to have to ARP out and take a look at that. I can now ping between the multi-layer switch and the router as if these two ports that are connected are physical layer three routed ports. And they are because the switch has tricked Ethernet 02 into thinking that he is a layer three routed port, but behind the scenes, that is the SVI interface that's being used 
to facilitate the routing of the traffic. Okay, so we've got that sorted out. If I were to go to interface, uh, let's say do show IP interface brief, let's pick an interface, uh, we're going to say 2.2. So interface Ethernet 2.2. What if I tried to say IP address 192.168.1.11? What's going to happen here? Right, it's going to give us an error because, again, this is a layer 2 port. And so this is one of the protections is that it's not going to just allow you to go to an interface and throw an IP on there. I have to say no switch port. Now, remember, as soon as I do this, when I run that show, uh, where are we at here? Uh, oh, it wasn't from here. So do show uh, VLAN internal usage. So what do you think we're going to see now? Exactly. As soon as you say no switch port, the switch says, you know what? He's going to make this a layer 3 port. That's the command to do it. I'm going to snag up the next VLAN in line that's going to be used, or in order that's going to be used in an ascending order, starting from 1006 up, and that is going to be the secret or hidden switch virtual interface that gives me that layer 3 capability. So this also raises the question, uh, if I were to exit out here, this raises an interesting question, right? So let's say you created a VLAN structure where you want to use VLAN 1007. And I'm going to name it um, marketing engineer, we'll say marketing. And actually, let's just say MGT, marketing, or MKGT. All right. And I'm going to type end. So I've just assigned VLAN 1007, which is already tied to Ethernet 2.2, and I've named it marketing because I want to use this VLAN on the switch for 20 ports, and we're going to plug marketing PCs into those ports. Can't do it, right? Because, again, this has been locked up by the internal workings of the multi-layer switch and it is using that VLAN and the port manager uh, it's using that VLAN for that switch virtual interface to bridge the physical layer 3 port that we've converted from a layer 2 port to a layer 3 port to bridge that to the switch virtual interface so we're going to get this error saying that is not going to work so definitely be careful if you're using VLANs you know, a thousand six and higher, and you're on a multi-layer switch, and you're creating all kinds of routed interfaces. You may not have uh, the ability to use the VLAN that you want. The question that I often get asked is, "Okay, well, wait a second. When I say no switch port, can I pick the VLAN that's being used?" And the answer to that question is no, because that decision has already been made for you right there. Now, on some switch platforms, and the 3750, 3750X, the majority of the platforms I've seen, it is the policy is ascending. So the question is, can I change that policy? Well, let's try it. If I say VLAN internal allocation policy, question mark, you can see here it gives me the option to say descending, right? And so now let's say do show run, pipe it to include VLAN. And now the policy is descending. So let's see, where does that start from? So I'm going to go into interface Ethernet 2.1. And I'm going to say no switch port. And actually, before we do this, again, do show VLAN internal usage. That's what we've got. As soon as I say no switch port on Ethernet 2.1, and I say do show VLAN internal usage, take a look at where it starts now. It starts at 4094. Now, this is convenient because this is Cisco IOU, right? However, on a 3750 or even a 2950, right? So back on this 2950 here, show run, include VLAN. Oh, it actually doesn't even list the VLAN. So let's do it. We'll take a look at 3750 because I know it does show it here. So, uh, and again, that was actually a terrible move because, let me ask you, so why doesn't it show on this 2950? Exactly. There's not going to be an internal allocation policy ascending, 
descending or otherwise, why? Exactly, because this is not a switch that is capable of multi-layer functionality. 2900 series is not a multi-layer switch. So it's not even going to show up here. So in my rush to get here to show you this, it completely slipped my mind. So on the 3750, we're going to see it here because this is a multi-layer switch. And so what is the VLAN internal allocation policy? It's ascending. So let's see. Can I change it? So let's say VLAN internal allocation policy question mark. So on the 3750, it's ascending. I've looked on 3750Xs, 3750Gs, Es, 3560s, 3560Gs. It's always ascending. So here's the question, and this is one of those little quirky Cisco things. Why do they give me the command to set it if I can't turn it off? So what if I were to say no VLAN internal allocation policy ascending? or no VLAN internal allocation policy. When I say do show run include VLAN, what does it say? Ascending, but I just turned, I said no, no VLAN, and it doesn't give me an error, right? So why is it that that is still there? And the bigger question is, if it won't allow me to remove it, why is there a, a command syntax to turn it back on? Because clearly I can't turn it off so why is there a command to turn it on if I can't turn it off? And again, there may be a reason to that that I just don't know. Um, but again, it's always one of those little quirky things that I kind of scratch my head as to why do they let you do that? So why do they not give me an error when I try to say no VLAN internal allocation policy and it just give me, give me the prompt back? And then why is there a command to turn it on if they're not going to let me turn it off? So we just changed this to descending. So it's going to start at 4094. All right, so... Again, definitely important to cover to make sure that you have a full understanding of what that multi-layer switch is doing the moment you type in no switch port. So now we're going to get back on track here. We're on step number eight, verify the configuration of the routed interface. We kind of already did that. Do show IP interface brief. And here it is, Ethernet 02 is up, up, and it is a routed port. There is my layer three address. 10.0.99.1. So what are we going to do now? Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on EIGRP. Uh, and Leonard had a good question during the week. He said, well, why would you do this? Um, again, they've already got it configured here. If I were to say show run and pipe it to section EIGRP, you can see that they've already got it configured here. They've got that redistribute static statement. So if I were to say show run include route, we would see that there's a static route here, a uh, static default route, and that that route is going to be redistributed to any other EIGRP speakers who have the same autonomous system number as the router one, or as router one. And so really, the, the best answer I could give you, uh, Leonard, and we talked about this in class, was that they've already set the router up to do this, so they're using the routing protocol. So that's why we're going to go ahead and set this up. As you pointed out, we could just as easily throw a default route onto the multi-layer switch saying, hey, go to router one. But again, they've set it up here with EIGRP. So for step nine, we're going to go ahead and play along. I'm going to say router EIGRP one. Remember, the autonomous system number, that one, has to match with the router or else they are not going to form an adjacency. Uh, and then they have us just put in here sort of a wide open network statement, network 10.0.0.0. And we should see the adjacency come up. So now if I say do show IP route, because again, we are a multi-layer switch, we are routing, there it is right there. So that is the D, remember, stands for the dual, the diffusing update algorithm for EIGRP. And that's how EIGRP routes are identified in the routing table. Uh, the asterisk means, again, it is a candidate default route. And that is exactly what we're using this for. And the EX is it is a, an external EIGRP route. And we know this also because the administrative distance is 170. So now that the multi-layer switch is configured, Everything is ready to go. Let's go down to the PCs and let's see, can PC1 ping 
the internet. So we'll create some space here between us and that last prompt. And let's say ping 209.165.1. And was it 1 actually? Let me double check that. Um, yeah, 201, sorry. Dot 201 dot 1. All right, what if I do a trace? And actually, let's just pull this back up, and we'll change it to trace route. And there you go. So where is the first hop for PC1? PC1 goes up to 10.0.10.1. .10 then I go to the router interface, that point-to-point -point link between the multi-layer switch and router 1. And then I transit out to that internet connection. What about PC2? We should be good to go here to ping 209.165. 201.1. Perfect. What if we trace that? And the only difference here should be that the first hop, instead of going to 10.0.10.1, I should go to 10.0.21, but then I still use that link out to the router. All right, well, we've covered a lot of ground here, a lot of very important ground, right? As we start to bridge the gap between layer two, and we've spent a lot of time on spanning tree and uh, dealing with just layer two only features and functionality, now we're starting to bridge that gap between layer two and layer three, and inner VLAN routing is a very, very critical part of that conversation. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Again, enjoy your week off, enjoy spring break, and I will see you Monday night. Have a good one.